Yeah. Yeah. We're not sure exactly what the problem was, but we had no image. But it looks like everything's working all right now. We don't have anybody online right now. It takes it takes a minute or two between when I go on and it tells everybody the notification. Yeah, we just started the live stream, okay? We just started the live stream. So whatever you say is getting streamed over YouTube. Yeah. So no secrets. If you have a secret crush or something, you need to keep that to yourself. Yeah, we gotta keep the secret crushes to yourself. All right. Well, let's let me turn that a little bit because it looks a little funny to me. Looks a little funny to me. Oh, that looks better. Okay. Looks like things are working, at least, not like last time. Um, we're going to start with our international prayer request tonight. Um, we are praying for Guatemala tonight. So I'm glad Cadence is here, because Cadence has been to Guatemala. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, Cadence huh? Cadence has so much gum in her mouth right now that she will not do. No, she shoved, like, in her yeah, don't choke. We won't. So she's just going to nod. Away. But... Cadence, her dad is from Guatemala, and she and her brother have been to Guatemala. And tonight, we are praying for Guatemala. So cool. How about that? So, here we go. Okay, we've got a couple little bits of information about the country first. Guatemala is known as the place of origin for the Mayan civilization, which flourished there for the first millennium AD, so the first thousand years. Um, you know, from, from the year zero to the year 1000. Um, it won its independence from Spain in 1821. I don't know what year Spain uh, came in. Oh, in 1600s. Uh, probably 1600s, maybe earlier. Um, but yeah, so in 1821, Guatemala won its independence from Spain following over 300 years of Spanish rule, so I guess it's been, you know. In 1996, the Guatemalan government signed a peace agreement that ended a 36-year war. Apart from the official language of Spanish, there are 21 Mayan languages that are used in Guatemala. Oh, Diane is online with us. Hello, Diane. Can you hear us okay? Give us a thumbs up or something if you can. I know we had some technical trouble last week. Thank um, you, Diane. Now, about the Church of the Nazarene in Guatemala. The work of the Church of the Nazarene began in Guatemala in 1904, making it the third oldest Spanish mission of the Church of the Nazarene in the Western Hemisphere, after Cuba and Mexico. These nations have received missionaries for over a century, but they are also sending missionaries out to other countries. Uh, one, uh, one famous Guatemalan who some of you have met is Dr. Gustavo Crocker, who is one of our general superintendents. So he's the one that spoke the last two years at assembly. Um, let's see. There's a story in a little bit about missions that we'll get to, but first some stats. I know you guys love the numbers so much. Uh, the Church of the Nazarene in Guatemala has 103,949 members. There are 770 fully organized churches and 116 not yet fully organized churches. There are 351 district licensed and 461 ordained ministers, and there are 15 districts. Oh, Trudy is on with us, and Edgar and Jane and their family are on with us, and they say they can hear us. I have my little blue light on the microphone, but you never know. So that is all of our statistics. They have um, a couple of prayers they want us to pray for. They praise God that in Guatemala, across 15 districts, there is freedom to preach the word of God. They pray for receptive hearts to hear the good news. And they <laughs> praise God for the number of church planters from Guatemala who were trained at the NMI and Evangelism Summit and for their mission to reach their communities. 
So that's what this next little story is about, that, that meeting, the Evangelism Summit. So recently, the north central field of the Mesoamerica region, so that's just Nazarene stuff for how we assign missionaries. Um, they held their evangelism summit titled Together in Mission. There were 120 participants from Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, including missions leaders, pastors, district superintendents, and church planters. The event was held at the facilities of the Christian Convention Center in Guatemala. The conference was one of many initiatives of NMI and regional evangelism to mobilize churches to multiply and develop leaders. One of the goals set by the Mesoamerica region is to reach 1 million Nazarenes by 2030. So just for comparison, there are um, somewhere between 500 and 600,000 members in the Church of the Nazarene in the United States and Canada. So that would make Mesoamerica have twice as many members as USA Canada. Isn't that cool? Wow. So they are growing fast. Um, one memorable experience of the conference was the celebration of a sending service of a sponsored missionary from the East District of El Salvador to serve in Ecuador. So, I don't know, have any of you ever been to a missionary sending service? So it's kind of like a graduation party. So, well, was that kind of like a, a missionary sending service with, that we had for Rebecca when she came to visit? A Wait, little so bit, a little bit like that, yeah. She so, leave it shortly after that. so a sending service is when a missionary has accepted a call to go somewhere and their home church or their home district you have a big church service and you pray for the person and you have a big party and you celebrate. So they got to do that at this mission conference with people from three different countries. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, let's see, among the speakers they had Global NMI Director Lola Bricky, NMI Regional Coordinator Anna Maria Crocker, you might recognize her name. Uh, regional Evangelism Coordinator Milton Gay and Regional NDI Coordinator Monty Sear, as well as Carlos and Nancy Cordero, who are the Field Strategy Coordinators. So that's the same job that um, uh, Jennifer and Harrison have in Peru. So Jennifer, Stout, Bauman, and Harrison, they're the ones I really bet. They're the field, they're the field coordinators for Peru. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's about it for this. So um, it's pretty cool. If you sign up for the emails, there is a, there are lots of pictures, and there were some cool pictures on this one. And they also have the kids kaleidoscope section that you can look at that has kids activities. Um, I can't really speak in color and pictures. So um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Learn a little bit about Guatemala. Cadence, is there anything you want to tell us about Guatemala? What is something you like there? Mm, the zoo. The zoo? And the water park. And the water park. That's very cool. What was the weather like when you were there? Hot. Very hot? Yeah. No, for us, when it was in America, when it's like freezing cold for us, she goes to Guatemala. And she like texts me and she's like, I'm going it up in here. And I'm like, I don't know, freezing up in heels. So we were freezing <laughs> yeah. here and you were Like, we're like there. changing up and I'm like, I'm freezing here. I go there She's hot here. Yeah, right. and then also when she went to Guatemala and she came back, me and her always had different times. And I'm like, what's wrong with your timing? She's like, oh, I have Guatemala time. That like her whole life is dedicated to Guatemala. Yeah, like, her time is like 6 something. And it's 6 48. Yeah, and then 5 would be like, way something else, like 7. But like, like five, or like five, one below, two below actually, or two below. Two hours different. Yeah. So that would, it would be like four o'clock or something. Four you know why there's such a change? It's because South America experiences winter when we have summer. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, so when we have summer, it's cold in Guatemala. When we have winter, it's hot. I want to Yeah, because it's not going to go summer too. All right. Well. That's pretty cool. So that means in Guatemala right now it's 4.30. Well, 4.38. Okay, very cool. Let's get to some prayers. Um, unfortunately, I, 
Charlie texted me, texted me a prayer request, and I can't look at my text message because it is on my phone that's over there recording. Um, a friend of his um, is in intensive care. Uh, they live in Alloway now. They used to live down here. And I think he said their family used to own the auto parts store. I can't remember the text message. I should have written it down before I put my phone over there. But I'll check it when we're done. But Charlie has a friend in intensive care. Did Carl see Carl's Might be Carl. Yeah. Oh, no, Alloway. I think of. No, but he doesn't. He doesn't live here now, but they used to. Yeah. Um, I'll double check when we're done. Yeah. I'll double check when we're done. But I, Carlson sounds right. Um, let's see. Online, we do have a couple. Uh, Diane asked for prayers for Barry Zimmerman. He's been having a lot of court battles over custody and it sounds like their last court date didn't go very well so he's very depressed about that um, Diane also asked for prayers for her co-worker Kathy we've been praying for her for a little while she uh, her mother passed away I think about a year ago now and then her dog died, and then her mother's dog died. She's had a hard year. And um, Diane said she's having some health issues right now. Kathy is or Diane is? Diane is. Yeah. So that's what I have on the chat right now. Uh, how about in the room? Speaking so. Um, pray for Thursday. Hopefully Saturday works out good. Even though um, in the morning I know we're doing, you know, doing this little shindig on Saturday for us for the food pantry. So hopefully that will goes well. And then afterwards I have a doctor's appointment. So hopefully everything goes well. Then you know next Thursday just. I know, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah. It's tricky when we're yeah. But, so. yeah, um, I will you to be nice. Pray for him, too, to be nice. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. It's okay. It's an onion. <laughs> you just got to keep on peeling it. Yeah. No matter how, how small it is. And sometimes we get muffins along the way. <laughs> Whenever you need a muffin, you know where to come. <laughs> That's true. If you ever need a muffin, they know where some muffins are. I, no, no, I, I just want the recipe. That's it. I'm not crazy. Okay. If we don't have any, we know where to get them. Yeah, we, that's for sure. Uh, it looks like you have your notebook out, Carol. Oh, I'm always good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> are there any that you'd like to share? Uh, I am, uh, I'd like to for this piss of me how well it went and uh, yeah. that everybody got along well and it just seemed like a really nice thing to do. I hope you do it again. Yeah, there we have, yeah. I know, great. over 30 people. Oh, yeah. There's all the kids here. For Remember Sunday when we had all the extra we kids come to us? I had work, but if you want to come here Sunday morning, she can. I'll be at work. Someone just had here with a red car. <laughs> Hopefully that's my wife. I saw a red car. You yeah. <laughs> Our families, we have the family setting where we can see each other. See, like I had, like I had you and the family link. It's the same thing. I think maybe you should put it on. Um, okay, so. Do you have something to say? Yeah, I think she's a little sugared up now. Do you have other prayer requests? I got Barry. Okay. Um, I'm very concerned about that. Thank you. I, I would like to work. 
work out that maybe the next prayer crawl we can put the chance. Hi, wife. Oh my God. You stuck in the big traffic. <laughs> yes, Do you mean Janice Lehman or your Janice? <laughs> I your Janice is pretty far away. Five hours away. We'd have to leave the day before. <laughs> yeah, please keep praying for Janice Lehman. Oh. I'm glad you made it. I made it. Yeah, I never thought you would come. Well, well, good we, have, we have little birthday cakes over there. We got, oh, kind of like those we got to sing happy birthday to Anna and Kaden, Aww. and tonight we're praying for Guatemala. Oh, that's so cool. So what a coincidence. Kaden's got to talk to us about Guatemala. Aww. And we're just sharing for everybody tonight. Okay. Um, George. Uh, my uncle Craig, this is like my mom, she said that he's going to be having a uh, kidney transplant. Oh, so wow. he also has to decide what the type of port place him in dialysis, which I, I don't want to do. Or that Who's having a kidney transplant? Well, Spence. Oh. Spence, you said the same thing? Yeah, Benerfield is his last name. I think Jesus knows which Spence we're talking about. I don't know. Right. And you said they're deciding on what kind of port? Yeah, it's, she said something about having, having me getting a kidney transplant and something about dialysis. Yeah. But he has to, what type of to be placed in him. Yeah. So they can start dialysis. Yeah. So, which I have no idea, but I just have a kidney on my mind. Yeah, port is kind of like an IV, but it's a little bit bigger. And they place a port when you're doing things like dialysis or chemotherapy where they, so they don't have to keep giving you an IV oh, okay. every time. It stays in. Oh, that's a feel Well, I mean, I'm just it depends on how you look at it. They don't have to stick you every time. So. You just have to always have that like IV thing? Well, they usually put it like up on your chest if that was the way. Okay. So yeah. it's like under your clothes and people will see it. It's not gonna, yeah, because it goes <laughs> like on your arm and you get stuff. Right. Yeah. Kidney All right, so Janice Lehman, do you have anything, anything else on your list you'd like to share? Okay. Uh, Ms. Jill, do you have any prayer requests? Thank you, Diane. Diane was adding Faye to <laughs> yeah, My nephew got hurt at work. Um, so it's a little scary. And he's a police officer. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about it anymore. Do you have a prayer request, Ms. Cadence? I pray for love. I don't know if it really works to pray for somebody when you're threatening them. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's how it's supposed to work. It's a joke we said. We don't talk about it. But um, it's something about Chuck's play. Um, anyways. Okay. I want to really play. Don't you really hear us? I want to play for um. Yesterday I found this gold. And my mom, it like hit a window for like wood because it was chasing um, like a squirrel. I don't know what happened. Um, and then when it hit the window, my mom like grabbed a box. She put some cotton in it. And, are you okay? Mm -hmm. What happened to like? My mom. And this has happened many times before. My, my mom usually just takes it and puts the cotton in the box. And then. Um, we usually just like we usually just hang out with it for a bit, put it out. We had this one bird, but it kind of like died. Yeah. Um, and we kept it for a bit. We had this like we put it in this cat cage, like it was a big <laughs> one. No, only because we couldn't buy um a like a cage for the other bird, so we bought like it was really big though. Okay. That was big. And it had big holes. Well, so we will pray up. for it. Your bird. Right. And then um I saw a big story. And then <laughs> you laugh at me. And then <laughs> well yeah.
nothing him. I lost everything except for I'll tell you what, when you think about it, you can tell us what you Okay. Um, <clears throat> as far as church, we do have a few things to pray for. Um, this Saturday is food pantry. So I don't think we put that on Ms. Carol's list. This Saturday. Yeah. It's it's on on Saturday. Yep, so food pantry on Saturday. Um, special thank you to um, Scott and Joe. Got a field trip today and bought lots of food. So that was really good. Herman went too. Awesome. Oh, Herman went too. No, oh, we yeah. just showed up Still hurt. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But he did say hi. And we need to keep Daryl in our prayers also. And I kind of feel like we're I kind of feel like we're being remiss because we haven't mentioned Rob in quite a while. He's been on my mind here lately. Yeah, Daryl got to talk to him about two weeks ago. Sunday Breakfast Mission is planning their basketball camp for June, and that's for 9 to 11 year olds. Are you a basketball star? No. No sports. Her sport is games, YouTube. Well, the, the exercise basketball. of fingers. <laughs> Very athletic thumbs. So it's called Alizar's Basketball Camp. It's named after their son who passed away. And uh, they hold it every year, and they do it to help kids. So it's something they do in his memory and honor. And I think that's pretty cool. Is that in Wilmington? It's in Wilmington. It's at the Sunday Breakfast Mission. Wilmington, Delaware? Yeah, like right over the bridge. Oh, you're being sharp. I'm sorry. It's just gonna work. It's on Poplar Street. Right next to the train station. Yeah, right next to the train yeah. station on Poplar Street. All right. Well, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for a chance to celebrate Cadence and Anna's birthday together tonight. Thank you for all of our friends who were able to join us on Sunday night for all the extra people. It was a lot of fun playing games with them and having a meal. Thank you that everything went so well, and uh, we hope that we get to see them again soon. We uh, lift up Charlie's friend, uh, Mr. Carlson, who's in ICU. We pray for his health and his family. We pray for Barry. Uh, we pray, Father, for his custody situation and the struggles they're having with the court. Pray, Father, that you would help his mind and his heart as he's going through this. We know that this is a big weight on him, and he misses his son a lot. We pray for Diane's co-worker, Kathy. Uh, we thank you that she and Diane are working together. We pray for Diane as she tries to be an encouragement to Kathy. Um, we 
also pray for Diane as she's having some health issues right now. Pray that you would help her to rest and recover and be well. Pray for Charity and for Scarlett. Pray for Thursday and Saturday for her doctor's appointment. Uh, we also pray for her um, Spence. Pray, Father, that they would be able to find a kidney transplant for him and that you would give them wisdom as they are figuring out his dialysis port. Pray that he would get all the treatment he needs to keep him in good shape and be in the best health he can for that transplant. Uh, we pray, Father, for Faye. We pray for her physical body. We pray for her mind. We pray for her spirit. And Father, we lift up um, Danny and Marcy and the rest of her family. We pray for the staff over there at Southgate who are caring for her. Pray, Father, for her weight loss and just things are going downhill for her, Father, and we pray for some good days. We lift up Janice Lehman to you. We pray for her blood pressure, that that would be stable, that she would stop having these dizzy spells, and that she could move around safely and go to her physical therapy appointments and regain strength. We also pray for Worky. We celebrate her graduation. Thank you that a bunch of us got to celebrate that with her, and we pray as she's getting ready to make her final decision about college and head off. Uh, we just pray for her wonderful future, Father. Uh, we lift up my nephew Adam, Father. We thank you that he wasn't hurt too bad, and we pray for his recovery. Uh, we lift up the little bird that love found. We pray that this little bird would be able to recover after get, hitting the window and be able to fly nice and strong. We pray for pantry day coming up on Saturday. We thank you for all of the wonderful food that has come in and we pray that you would help all of our volunteers to do our best. We also pray, Father, for Saturday as the Brecht family is having the celebration of life service for Steve. We pray, Father, that you would be with their family, that you would give them encouragement. We thank you, Father, that Caden's got to have a special field trip on her birthday. We lift up our brother Charlie. Father, we pray for the pain that he's having in his knees. We thank you that these injections help and pray for um, wisdom as he and his doctors are trying to decide if or when he might need a joint replacement. We pray for Daryl as he's dealing with some pain. We know that this last injection didn't do what they were hoping it would do. And uh, he's been having some trouble sleeping, Father. We pray that he would have restful sleep. We pray for Charlene as she's doing her best to take care of him. We also pray for Daryl's brothers as they're going through some health problems and just some life stuff. We pray for our brother Rob. We pray that he's safe right now and that we get to see him again soon. We pray for Alazar's basketball camp. We pray for Pastor Tom and all the volunteers who are going to help run it. We pray for all the kids who are going to attend. We pray that they get to have a good time and they get to be safe and there be no injuries at camp and that they get to hear the good news, Father. Know there are people who love them and that there's a safe place they can go. Please be with us tonight as we study your word. Help us as we try to say some names that are hard to say and uh, help us to learn from what the people are going through. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so we are studying the book of Nehemiah tonight. I know we have some new people who might not know where we're at. Um, does anybody want to catch up, Miss Love and Miss Cadence, on what's going on in Nehemiah? You need to leave? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got to pray with us. They were being respectful, but now they're being respectful. Thank you for waiting till we said amen. That was very respectful. I appreciate it. Well, have a happy rest of your birthday. Happy rest of your birthday. Have a great night. Um, all right, so Nehemiah, this is a book in the Bible that takes place 
after the Babylonian captivity. So the people lost a war. A lot of them died. Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. And many of them got carried off um, as prisoners of war. Uh, Daniel was one of those prisoners. That's the one with the lions, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So where we're at now, some of the people were given permission to come back to Jerusalem and start rebuilding. So they, bye, have a good night. They rebuilt the city wall and they rebuilt the temple and they're trying to rebuild some of the rest of the city and get settled again. Um, the last couple weeks, what we were talking about is um, as a way to celebrate the construction, the wall being done, they came together and read some of the Bible together. They read the Law of Moses. And they had, first they had um, a festival where they had um, sweet drinks and food to share. And then after that, they celebrated one of the Jewish festivals, the Festival of Booths, and they did some more reading, and they realized that maybe they weren't doing all the things they were supposed to do, or maybe they were doing some things they shouldn't be doing. So where we're at tonight, they have finished reading, and they are coming together as a people to decide what they're going to do about it. Last week, where we closed in chapter 9, some of the leaders had signed a document, like a, like a contract, and now we're going to see what happens with the rest of the people. Did I miss any important parts there? Okay, so we're in Nehemiah chapter 10, and this first one has a billion names. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take one for the team this week, unless you really want it, Josiah. I really want it. You really want it? Yeah, you can say the names. All right, Josiah likes saying names. Okay, so uh, you're going to read 1 to 27. So start there. Oh my goodness. And you're going to finish right there. Okay. The document was ratified and sealed with the following names. The governor, Nehemiah, son of, ha of Hakaliah, and also Zedekiah. Following priests, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Peshur, Aram, Am, sorry, Amariah, Malchijah, Hatush, Shebaniah, Malish, Malish, or Meramah, Obadiah, Daniel. Good job with Daniel. Shalom, Abijah, Mujamin, Messiah, Dilgai, and Shemaiah. These were the priests. Uh, the following Levites. Ashur, son of Azaniah, Binui from, from the family of Hanadad, uh, Kadmiel and their fellow Levites, Shabaniah, Bodiah, Kalita, Kaliah, Hanan, Mika, Ropa, uh, Hashabiah, uh, Zakir, Cherubiah, Shabaniah, Bodiah, Bani, and Binui. The following leaders. Parash, Pahat, Moab, Alam, Zatu, Bani, uh, Planai, Asgad, uh, Babai, uh, Adanda, Bigvai, Adin, Atari. I need a better Bigvai. Sorry. Bigvai! Bigvai! Adin, Atari, Hezekiah, Azur, Adiah, Shem, Azai, Harif, Anathoth, Nabai, um, Makiyash, Hashalam, Hazir, um, Meshizabal, Zadok, Jedua, uh, Pelatiah, Anan, An Anaya, uh, uh, Hoshea, or Hoshea, I don't know. Bye, Hoshea. Um, Hananiah, Hashub, uh, Helhesh, Pila, uh, Shubek, Rehom, uh, Hashem, Hashem, I don't know how to pronounce that. Hashem, nah. Hashem, <laughs> nah. Hashem, 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 and Hashem, nah. Hashem, nah. Thank you very much. That's very good. Wow. Right now, there is not going to be a test on those names. Thank goodness. Okay, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> James said you did an amazing job with the name. 
I particularly like your big buy. I'm glad you've been working on that. <laughs> we get to say his name a couple times in this book, so that's fun. <laughs> okay, so um, they got together, and I know different translations might say different things. But in verse 1, um, the New Living Translation says, The document was ratified and sealed with the following name. Anybody else to say ratified? What did yours say in verse 1? Uh, well, that's for me, I guess. I don't know. Chapter 10, Chap verse yeah. 1. But it just says like 10B. So I guess that's the, those who sealed it were. Those who sealed it. Okay. Yeah, so sealing, it's not just about taping it shut for the mail, right? Um, this is like the cover letter. Um, I like the word ratify in English because it helps us understand a little more. Have you ever heard of a document being ratified? Yes. Like what? Um, like for example, like a wall is ratified. Sure. So it's like put in place. Okay, did you hear what Jim said? The Declaration of Independence. That was what I put in my notes. Okay. Um, do you know anybody, remember back in 1776 when we declared our independence from Great Britain and a bunch of people signed it. One guy signed it really big. John Hancock. John Hancock, exactly. And a bunch of other people signed it, like Thomas, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson right. Franklin. <coughs> sure, and uh, lots of those other people. Uh, Adam Sandler, my bad. John Sandler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think Adam Sandler. He might have played John Adams. Sure. <laughs> so, what did it mean for those people to ratify a document and sign it? They okayed it. They yeah. wanted it, it to was, happen. It was written in stone, so to speak. Yeah, it's to make it legally binding, uh -huh. right? Exactly. <coughs> so, in that case, they represented some of the different colonies, different groups. In this case, we find out that the governor is involved, Priests are involved, Levites are involved, and family leaders are involved. Okay. So why do you think those people would have been picked to ratify a document? Well, what do you mean, like family, or do you mean everyone in general? What do you mean? Like out of all of the people that were there in Jerusalem. Okay. Governors would be important, yeah. Priests would be important, yeah. People that have, Well, like, what's the governor's job? The governor's people. Like government you, stuff, yeah. right? Okay, so you've got the government side. Yeah. What's a priest's job? That's the spiritual side. Yeah. Spiritual side, yeah. yeah. And family leaders, why would you include them? They must have the most valuable people in their family, I yeah. would think. So every level, right? It's the government people, the religious people, and all the different families. So it's a way to make sure everybody's included. Okay? Yeah, so it was, it's, it's, it's like it was one person's idea and everything. Right, it wasn't like just the governor signed it or just the high priest signed it. They were all agreeing or everybody agrees. Exactly. Hey or hey or something. Right. It's that we're all agreeing together. That was the point, right? Okay, disagree, we're not doing it. Right. But this document, the, the reading of the law, they're saying we are all agreeing to follow it. Okay. Um, then we've got some more people to get added in. I'm sorry, I have to pick all of my throat. <coughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> Can somebody read verses 28 and 29 for us? <coughs> Can do it. Then the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, gatekeepers, singers, temple servants, and all who had separated themselves from the pagan people from the land in order to obey the law of God together with their wives, sons, daughters, and all who were old enough to understand, joined their leaders and bound themselves with an oath. They swore a curse on themselves if they failed to obey the law of God, as issued by his servant Moses. They solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our God. Thank you. So. They've got thousands of people, right? So if every person signed, you'd need a gigantic document, right? 
So not every person present can actually sign the document. We named the people who did. Now we've got the rest of the people, okay? What do they do? They get where to uphold the document to uphold the rule. Exactly. So the, we have the people who signed it, they're ratifying it, they're putting their name on it, and that's all the leaders. Then all the rest of the people, we've got a list of a bunch of different groups, priests, Levites, gatekeepers, singers, temple servants, and all who had separated themselves to follow the law of God. So that's pretty much everybody, right? Uh, along with their wives, sons, and daughters, all who were old enough to understand. So, if we were to sign a law, let's say a law gets signed in our country, who signs it? Yeah, if it's a federal law, eventually the president has to sign House it. House of Representatives. Yep, Cong the Congress should, people who vote, they sign it. We should take they them out. out. They should have terms. Uh, well, they should have term limits, I agree. <laughs> Look, even the Levites in the Bible had term limits. They aged out. But anyway. Um, every, so this is, we're trying to, this, we're, we're listing names, we're listing jobs, we're listing, why do you think they're listing and listing and listing here? What are they trying to get at? It's important. It's important. Don't trust this guy. And who's included? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, it's really important and everybody's agreeing, okay? Um, we have words here like they solemnly promised or they swore an oath. What does it mean to solemnly promise or to swear an oath. Like swearing on your mother's grave. Cross my heart and hope to die, right? Yes. Yeah. Pinky swear. This is big stuff. Yeah, it's better than that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're at the top here, right? So we're not just talking about a legal contract. We're talking about I swear with all that I am that I'm going to do this. So they actually went by your word back in the day. Yeah. So your word is what it was your mind. If you don't have a word, then you're going to get killed. Right, but this also, this wasn't a private thing. They're all doing it together publicly. Yeah. Right? Kind of like a wedding vow, right? Like, Jill and I, we did sign a piece of paper when we got married, but we also spoke vows in front of <clears throat> our family and friends. All the witnesses. Yeah. So, I mean, there's the two legal witnesses who signed, but you also had all the people who were there at the wedding. Now, sometimes you only have two, and sometimes you have a lot, but... That's the idea, right? That you have lots of people who are witnessing your promise. And why do we do that? Why do we have lots of people who witness our promise? So they help us hold it up. They help us hold it up. So there's there's two points. There's the encouragement part, and then there's the accountability part, right? So if you know I'm married and you see me out fooling around, you don't give me a smack on the head, right? Right? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Carol's like, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> give me a big mouth. Or if I need some help. Come she, here, Paul. She, she'll promise us to do free. She'll right. promise. Right. Right. Jill. Or if I need some help, you'll help me, right? Yeah, yeah. you include non free items. Yeah. So those two things, right? We're going to encourage each other as we follow <laughs> by getting together to read together and ask questions and learn like they've been doing. And we're also going to hold each other accountable. We're going to make sure we follow these rules. Um, and they add an extra layer here in verse 29. Not only did they join the leaders in the oath, there was an extra thing they swore in verse 29. They swore to curse themselves to <clears throat> fail to obey. Yeah. The law of God. Now, it doesn't say exactly what the curse is, but what do you think it means for them to say, I swear a curse if I don't obey. The plague? Could be a plague, yeah. Yeah. Their hair all fall out, fall out or I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's a way to say things go both ways, right? Yeah. It's saying, God, you made a promise to bless us if we follow you, and we're promising to follow you. But they're also saying, God, you should punish us if we don't. I mean, people say that even now. I'll do that, but it's almost like there's no pay 
anything would happen now. Not to say it like that. Just trust me, I don't want any strikes. I'm good. I got enough. So that's why I'm just saying that a whole lot of things people are like that now. Like, oh yeah. Well, I don't yeah, think I it's swear, just, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, I don't think it's just now, Jerry. I think this people have always been this way. That's why they're the problem. But trust me, if I if I saw some of these examples that these people went through, I wouldn't even need my mustard seed in my fifth pocket. Like that that mustard seed is like taking up a whole pocket, not just the fifth. So I mean, that's where I'm at. Yeah, they've seen amazing things. They're back in their city. The they, walls they rebuilt. By, like, stuff like that by faith by sight. Is that faith by just like believing? Is it that? I don't think so. I mean, some people would, like. I think we all we all start somewhere, right? And so I think when it comes to faith, it usually starts with something we see or feel, and that's kind of that's where things start. I think as our faith grows then you're more able to deal with the, the ups and downs, probably more the downs, right? Um, without getting knocked about too much. It's the same, like, in a marriage. Like, when Jill and I first got married, uh, I'm not going to share all the details, but let's just say we both cried on our first visit to each other. <laughs> we did not know to buy each other. It did not go well, right? <laughs> well, she just got socks. She didn't like that line of train set. So... Not gonna share any details. That was a small thing, but we were early on in our marriage and it it was a big bump for us. Now, if we get each other bad gifts, that, you know, whatever. We try. Right. Sorry. So <laughs> well, when, when the team is fine. Faith is like that, right? Faith is a relationship. And that's where we're gonna get into some of the problems. They're swearing a legal oath on a document to follow a list of which is good, I'm not saying that that's bad, but if their hearts aren't in it, are they gonna be able to do this? No, that's my question I have about this whole thing, based on what we've read in the Bible in past history. They've always been knuckleheads, they promised this and swear that, and always revert back to their old ways. Right, so we so talked about, makes us any different. yeah, we talked about the pendulum kind of swinging back and forth, so, when they were marching into Jerusalem and they had their wagons full of gold and the king had sent them lumber and that sounded pretty cool. But then the neighbors want to kill them and they all start complaining. Now the wall's done and the gates are up and they got gatekeepers and the temple's up. Yay! We're here and we're celebrating and they build a platform and they read the law and they make the promises. Do you think it's going to stay that way? They're going to build catapults. Like yeah, so here's that's the catch, right? Making a vow is not nearly as hard as keeping a vow. Yeah. Um, so let's get into now some of the things that they promised to do. Um, now, they're not going to restate the whole law, but the people are naming some specific things. Let me just say, why do you think they would name some specific things in their promise? Because it's easier for them say, hey, I promise this, they might have it. What if they say, I can't promise that, but now I'll have it. It's easier to say they screwed it up. Can get away. It could be things they already screwed up and they know could be bad. It could be things they're doing right and it's easy to promise. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, like oh, I can give up this, but then are you actually going to do it or are you going to just give up for a month? Right. Not saying like that, but... No, it's a good point. I didn't for a month at all these One year I gave up TV shows for Lent. And then I had to decide after Lent what was I going to do. I didn't mean to give up Wi-Fi, but I guess I'm giving it up because I can't afford it. I don't know if that counts as giving it up if you don't have a choice. <laughs> Look at them. That's like saying I they're gave up. I gave up them. owning Lamborghinis. <laughs> I, mean, I did too. Yeah. I don't know that that really counts. <laughs> yeah. No up, Ferrari. It wasn't so yeah. my intent, but just what happened yeah, now. If it's happened. not your intent, I don't know if that counts. But I can say at McDonald's. <laughs> or here. Listen. If you park in the parking lot, you get good church Wi Fi. Yeah, no, but the, what sucks is that I'm like in my if I get in my car, I'm using roaming to talk on my phone. I can't talk in my phone in my own home. I just sit in my driveway. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like just had, you know, <coughs> charge. I'm learning. Like I'm the very what's the word? I don't know. Learning. Like, You're adapting. Learning. No, I I just gave up all my independence and I'm learning how to be independent. You're in a 
state of transition. And transition states are hard because you're going from one thing to another thing. Yes. So you're leaving one thing behind, but you're not to the next thing. Just remember, you only get one day at a time. And there's extra muffins, so they go home. Yes, there's extra muffins. Sure. I ain't gonna say anything. Scarlett was sure just like, Mars oh, never guaranteed that muffins might not be there. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going here and look at some of the things they promised, okay? Can somebody read verses 30 and 31? Sure. We promised not to let our daughters marry the pagan people of the land, and not to let our sons marry their daughters. <clears throat> We also promised that if the people of the land should bring any merchandise or grains to be sold on the Sabbath or on any other holy day, we will refuse to buy it. Every seventh year we will let our land rest, and we will cancel all debts owed to us. Our oh, man, let's do that this year. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness, I would love for that. <laughs> How many so, it goes both ways, so that means we lose our retirement, too money owed to us goes away too. If so. I don't have any debts, I'll be fine. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I don't even think I'm going to be able to retire either. So, first one here. We promise not to let our daughters marry their sons and not to let our sons marry their daughters. Why do you think that's in there? They don't want to mix. Mix marriage. <laughs> yep. There was a rule that, that people of a certain faith were supposed to marry people of that faith. That's, I don't want to say the word stupid. I think that's stupid because how come, like, I remember you guys were talking about that King Solomon dude, I think, on Sunday, how he met Mary Sheba. That's from, I know it was a business trade, so how is that fair for them to do it, but then the commoners can't? Not to say the commoners, but I was supposed to. No, no, time out, time out. No, you're asking a very, very good question. And here's the answer it didn't work out. When the kings did that, everything blew up. Well, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, she was Solomon's kid is the one who led them to the Civil War, and they were never a united country again. Even now? Haven't you Even heard now. that the Bible is full of enemies? Yeah. So when people did that, it never, well, I'm not going to say never, but when people did stuff like what Solomon did and married a thousand women, it didn't work out. It was not good. The leaders were not supposed to follow different rules from the commoners, but they did blew up in their faces over and over again. Yeah, how are you going to like, support 700 wives? Dude, I can't even support one kid. Well, <laughs> he was pretty rich, but how do you have, a, rel like, how do you have a relationship with that many people? Was he rich like... He was a king. Like, famous yeah. like an actor? One of the he, richest like, people to ever live like, in the history the of the world. Elon Musk. Even more. He rich. was a king. He literally had access to all of the... Like people. Scrooge McDuck. Wow. Didn't even know one. I, was thinking, I was actually thinking of Prince Charles. Yeah, the mansion and the yacht. <laughs> Think one person with all of the U.S.'s budget, and that's basically what it's about. Even more. He had diamond yeah, mines, he had that. gold mines. Richer than any person alive today. I just want to so, 2%. So, you might remember, you might not remember, back when we read Ezra, the book before this, this question of marriage came up. Do you guys remember what happened? No. Not sure. Well, you weren't here for it, so you get a pass. <laughs> they did this. A bunch of people had married people of other faiths. And, and they, they broke the rule. They, yeah. And they broke the marriage. Yeah. So they're making a promise not to break a rule that but they, already broke. they broke and had to go back and try to fix. Mm -hmm. Okay? So. Here's one of those things where it's listed because this is an issue. Yeah, it already happened. We don't yeah. want it to happen again. Right. The next one about doing business on the Sabbath. I mean, that's a given because even they got mad at Jesus for healing someone. Right. That should be a given, but I'm going to give you a hint in a little bit. It's going to be a problem. The next thing about debts. This came up earlier in Nehemiah. Do you remember the issue with debts? Yeah, because he even said, like, don't like a tax on interest or something like that? Exactly. See, you That's weren't even here to read it and you were done. No, I remember like a little Oh, you were here for that week? A little bit, okay. yeah. Yeah, that was the Which problem. I I the people who were rich were lending money to the people who were poor, and they were charging them a ton of interest, and they weren't supposed to do like that. credit cards. It's They're exactly. All this yeah. money. They're They're like, hey, it's it's exactly like credit card debt. It's I'm what like, we would call today, we call it predatory lending. 
It's not right. Like payday loans and credit card debt. Yep, exactly. So, that's right. yeah. so again, it's listed in there because it's an issue. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, 32 to 34. Oh my gosh, that just drives me nuts. Who read the last one? I think you read the last, right? I did. Okay. Can somebody read 32 to 34 who's not Carol? Okay. <laughs> I'll read. Thank you. We assume the responsibility for carrying out the demands to give a third of a shuffle. We'll talk about that. Okay. Let's <laughs> go look at the, the little things on the bottom. Each year for the service of the house of God. For the bread set out on the table, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbath at, at the new moon feast and at the appointed, appointed festivals, for the holy offerings, for sin offerings, to make anointment for Israel, and for all the duties of the house of our God. Should I read 34 Taylor? Yes, please. Okay. We, the priests, the Levites, and the people, have cast lots of determined when each of our families is to bring to the house of our God. At set times each year, a contribution of wood to burn on the altar of our Lord, of Lord our God, as it is written in the law. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, hang on. Can you open a browser tab on there real quick? Google. Uh, I know, I'm just telling you. Google the current value of silver. Oh, I was going to say, it says silver. What am I about? We're going to figure out what the number is. I should have done this ahead of time, but. So. Uh, $31.88 per ounce. Per ounce. Uh, what about per gram? Okay, so while she's doing that, we promise to pay the annual temple tax of, it's a fraction of a shekel, it's a, about an eighth of an ounce of silver. Yeah, that's what mine said on the bottom, it said an eighth of an ounce, four Wait, so what was about four grams. An eighth of an ounce or four grams? Uh, one dollar and two cents per gram. Okay, so in today's money, that'd be about four dollars. How much they got that they were all supposed to contribute that much each year to help take care of the temple. But that would be horrible for like us. We be it was probably more, more for them. Yeah. But the idea here is every person every year was supposed to make a donation to the temple that was there to help take care of the temple. Right? To you know, replace the broken blocks and fix the leak in the roof and buy new floor mats for the door. It's whatever. their form of time. Well, this is not just, this is something other than time. Oh, this is just be lucky that you're inside the night. This is Maybe. considered an offer. Oh. So your tithing is 10%, right? So that's, that's a percentage. So people who had more money paid more. People who had less paid less temple tax was a flat tax that everybody paid the same, regardless of how much money you made. That okay. kind of sucks. Well, it was $4. Yeah, but, I mean, like for instance, some people make more money than me, but if I can all have $4, then I'm screwed, right? Where would it go on the next year? No, everybody was supposed to pay this every year. The idea is everybody is supposed to work together to take care of the temple. Everybody uses it for worship, and everybody is oh, supposed okay. to contribute to take care of it. Because if I needed something, then I could go to the temple and say, hey, buddy, help me out. And here are some of the things that they use that money for. The bread of the presence. So they bake fresh bread every day to put out on the table as an offering to God. And that was changed out so that it was always fresh. And then once they took the fresh bread out, the bread they took out, they let the priests eat. And then they would put the fresh bread on the table. I like how uh, they give away the day old donuts. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Like, if they give, like, food to God, right, as an offering, how, like, back in the day, Cain and Abel do all that stuff, like, what happened, like, I know it's going to sound really far-fetched, but I have to say, 
So the dude just sat there, right? No. And I really no. don't think he came down like, yeah, I'm gonna eat this stuff right here. Because no. he yeah, didn't like, he, he did not, not like cane stuff because he did give him a, a lamb, but he was in charge of the animal. Okay. That, that was like 17 questions. So let's call. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. So the Cain and Abel question, that was an issue because Abel gave his best. Cain did not give his best. Oh, oh so he's just like, oh, well, you know. It wasn't, I like what you brought, not what you brought. Okay. You know, you brought meatballs and you brought chicken parm, and I like chicken parm better. It wasn't like that. It was that Abel gave out of his best and Cain did. Spot, because it's like, what, spotless or something like that? That's one, like of the, one of the rules that the, the offerings to God are not supposed to be messed up. So even like the lit these people too, like yeah, you're not supposed perfect. to give junky stuff to God. But then I thought like seriously, like, you're not supposed to eat the fat all off the animal. That's been there are certain God. parts that they don't eat. But again, let me Sorry. let me catch up. So the offerings that were given to God, there were a few different things that were done with them. Sometimes the offering is offered to God, and then the family would all eat it together, like the Passover okay. lamb. They cook the lamb. And then they all eat it together as a meal. It's like, God, this is for you, but we're all going to eat it. It's like you're saying, not here. It's like saying grace before you eat. Okay. okay. There were other offerings that were offered, and parts of it went to the priests so that the priests had food to eat. Sometimes that was grain. Sometimes that was meat. It was different things. Okay. And then there was another class of offerings that were called wave offerings or burnt offerings. And they were actually burned because they would build a fire, and they would burn it. And they believe that the scent of the smoke going up was pleasing to God. This was like how like Indians like do meat, like not do meat, but you know what I mean, like sacrificing. Even though it's humans, but well, sacrificing things has been a part of a lot of different spiritual practices. Um, but yeah, so those were but that was kind of the main things that would happen to sacrifices to God. Sometimes the family ate it, sometimes it went to feed the priests or their families because they didn't own land or have jobs. And sometimes it was burned as an offering to God, okay? Um, so the temple tax was used to pay for the bread and to provide some of the other offerings to make sure that they had what they needed for the celebrations and the festivals. Um, so sometimes people would donate lambs, but maybe you didn't have enough lambs. So you had to buy some lambs. This money made sure that they had all the stuff they were supposed to have, okay? Um, it says it will provide everything necessary for the work of the temple, okay? So whatever was needed that wasn't donated, the temple tax was used to purchase it. Okay. The next one in 34, it says that the, the Levites and their families and the common people, they cast lots. So casting lots is kind of like rolling dice figure out who goes when, okay? You know how, like, if you're going to play Monopoly, everybody rolls the dice, and whoever gets the highest number gets to go first, and then somebody else goes second, somebody else goes third. It's like that, okay? So it says, they cast the sacred lots to decide who would bring wood when. So these fires that I talked about, the fire for the altar, you need firewood, okay? And so they would cast these lots to figure out well, this week it's going to be the Isaacs who bring the wood. Next week the Darminios will bring the wood. Next week, the week after that, you bring the wood, right? And they would take turns. So, or, so it wasn't always the same family that always had to do it. Um, because that would be really hard if you had to do it every week. It would be a lot of work. I'll get the gravies, I got the rice. Got it. Okay. So. The, the promises that Carol read were about stuff we should do or shouldn't do. This section is about offerings and, and firewood and things like that. Kind of like, how are we going to worship God? What happens if the people don't keep these promises? They're going to get cursed, them? man. They already agreed to have, like, put a curse on their family. So they've agreed That's to be us. cursed. What happens in the temple if people don't? What happens in the temple if people don't bring firewood? Fire, there's no fire. And if there's no fire, there's no sacrifice. Right. Yeah. And like God's going to get mad? Well, the point is, we all have to work together for this to work. Yeah. It needs to be a community effort. And if people don't pull their weight, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. 
So we're all in this together is kind of what they're saying. To use New Testament language, Paul talks about us as different parts of a body. Right? That if one organ in the body doesn't work, the whole body suffers. Right? So that's kind of what we're getting at here. We're all going to work together. Um, now we've got a couple more parts here, just a little bit more to finish. Uh, can somebody read 35 to 37? We promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year, whether it be a crop from the soil or from our fruit trees. We agree to give God our oldest sons and the firstborn of all our herds and flocks as prescribed in the law. We will present them to the priests who minister in the temple of our God. We will store the produce in the storerooms of the temple of our God. We will bring the best of our flour and other grain offerings, the best of our fruit, and the best of our new wine and olive oil. We promise to bring to the Levites a tenth of everything our land produces, for is it the, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all our rural towns. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to ask a food pantry question. Okay. I'm going to pitch this one to the Isaacs. <laughs> when people donate canned food to the pantry, is it all the same? No. You guys check dates a lot, right? Do we ever get brand new food? Yeah. yeah. How do you feel when the brand new food comes? I don't have to check it. It's, it's awesome, right? We get to give yeah. really good stuff away. Yeah. But is all the food brand new? No. no. no sometimes there's 20 year old Cheerios. Wow. Actually, my record is like 1974. So that is a Monica once yeah. found a can that was dated for the 70s. It was that a can is, of tuna. That, I'm, I'm sorry, I probably would definitely have been there. Just yeah. yeah, that can is older than yeah, when Charlie was like older than dad. Yeah, that's, just that's like, pretty old. I'm, saying, I'm 85 and I know. Also, old. Jill's they older. Were in their they, they, they were in their 20s. You guys are in their 20s. That's yeah. even older than Jill. That's when Charlie was a guppy. <laughs> Charlie was a guppy. Charlie did too. Okay. So, <laughs> are we supposed to give garbage to the food pantry? No. 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 Okay. No. Now, let's use that example. But people do. Well, it's probably not intentionally, but then again, it's like. Eh, sometimes I mean, you, you just clean it out. I mean, if you, you see the dust around the Charity, if you got a can of tuna from 1974. I said I would open it just because I wanted, like, I gotta see this. Sorry, it's just If you came to the pantry yeah, and you were hungry. You kill your cat. No, time like, out, time out. Time out. If you came to the pantry and you were hungry and I gave you a can of tuna from 1974, how would you feel? If I didn't know it was from 1974? No, no it was very you looked at it, it's you all just gave it to me, I'd be like, oh, thanks, man. It's like a rust well, old can. Yeah. It was well, I'd probably know by the label that it's like, wow, what year is that, man? We yeah, if the date's in there, but it's old. So, <laughs> let's bring this in. Let's bring it back around, okay? They list different things, like olive oil and flour and fruit and grain, but there's one phrase that's repeated for all those things. First. First and best, right? Yeah. Why are they supposed to bring Why the best? Why do they want my first son? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, give me a second. They're doing the last name, legacy, I would think. Let's do one thing at a time. Okay. Why the best? Because, because they deserve it. Okay. That's a sacrifice. Because it is a sacrifice. Look at that one guy if I give God my son, garbage, if I give him my trash, that's not a sacrifice. Use your trash as another man's treasure, but I mean, I guess not in this case. Yeah, but sometimes trash is just trash. Thank you. If I wrap up a dirty diaper and put a bow on it, it's still a dirty oh. diaper, right? So, what now? First fruits. Um, I don't know how many of you are farmers, but back then they didn't have things like uh, deep freezers or canned goods or freeze-dried meals ready to eat, okay? So, you had to try to store your food, and if you stored up your wheat, by the time you got around to the next year's harvest, just before you harvested, how old was the wheat that you had in your house? A year, year old. If you had anything left, it was a year old, right? And you might, you'd probably be out, right, by then. Mm -hmm. By the time it's ready to harvest, you probably used up everything so when that first batch of, of wheat gets harvested, what are you going to want to do with it? Eat it. Eat it. 
I've been waiting a year for this. What are they told to do? No. That first, that first part is supposed to be an offering. Why would you do that? Why would you give your first and your best to God? Okay, you said so he would give you more. You said okay. because he gave it to us. Yeah. Um, there were some ideas that people thought if they gave more to God, they'd get more. But the idea here is to recognize that who does all the grain really belong to? Yeah. God. Really, none of it's mine. Right. I'm not giving him my grain. He's taking a little bit and let me keep the rest. It's that idea of recognizing that really it all belongs to God. It's to teach us gratitude and to focus on I wish everybody would realize that. Yeah. Now, the firstborn son thing, I'm going to give you the short version. But basically, this goes back to what happened when they left Egypt. Do you remember what happened when the tenth plague? Killed, killed the firstborn yeah, sons of Israel. And so part of the practice that came out of that in the law is that the firstborn son of every family belonged to God. Now, did they kill him? No. No. They were redeemed. Now, part of the way they were redeemed was by an offering. But another part of the way they were redeemed is through the Levites. So, Instead of the firstborn of every family belonging to God, God took one tribe and said, okay, these guys are mine. And so the Levites belong to God. And they're the ones who served in the temple. Yeah. Right? So the Levites were before the, the um, Hebrews? The Jews? I'm not sure exactly. They're, so I thought the other people were his chosen people. They are. They're all his chosen people. But the Levites, that tribe, they were the ones who served in the temple. So they're both like they're chosen Jews or Hebrews? Well, they are. They had a special job. They are Hebrews, they are Jews, but it's one of the 12 tribes. It's not about better or worse. It's about different. It's saying these guys, they're going to serve in the temple. Um, they didn't start serving the temple till they were 30, so they would have time to get married and start a family. And forget the upper age but there was also an upper age limit where once they hit that age they didn't have to like anymore. 60 hours more time I don't remember what it is and I don't want to say it wrong but you know it was a, it was a window and they rotated who served you weren't on duty all the time just like how they rotated who was ready to work okay um, so you got to bring your best you got to bring your first um, and we talked about the firstborns. We're basically reviewing all the stuff that they're supposed to do. This last part mentions the tithe. And um, well, let's just do that. Can somebody finish this out, 38 and 39? Okay. A priest descended from Aaron is a help to the Levites when they receive them. And the Levites are bring a tenth of the tithes, uh, tithes up to the house of our God, to the storerooms of the treasurers. The people of Israel, including the Levites, are to bring their contributes of their of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the storerooms where the articles for the sanctuary and for the missionary priest. The gatekeepers and the musicians are also kept. We will not neglect the house of our God. Thank you. So here we talk about the tithe, which means a tenth, which this is different than the other offering we talked about. So you might hear when I talk in uh, Sunday morning worship, I talk about God's tithe and our offerings. Right? So there's the tithe and then there's the offering. They're not the same thing. So the tithe, that's 10% off the top, right? The offerings are different, and they can be for lots of different things. There were free will offerings that you just gave because you wanted to. Um, and then there were other offerings that you were give, supposed to give for certain reasons, okay? The priest, 
who is a descendant of Aaron, and the other Levites who are the servants in the temple. And Aaron is Aaron, right? The Moses' one that brother. Moses. Okay. Yep. So in order to be, in order to work in the temple in any form, you had to be a Levite. Okay. Now Moses and Aaron, they were Levites. Okay. In order to be a priest, you have to be of the line of Aaron. So not just a Levite, but Aaron's family. And then it actually splits off a couple times down the way. So all Levites served in some form, but you had to be of the line of Aaron if you were going to be a priest. Okay? Is it only men had power, or did women also? I'm saying for like priests and stuff like that. As far as priests, only only men could be priests back then. Now, nowadays, that's we we as if we want to talk about pastors, we we don't have it just men. Of course it's not by family. Um, we promise not to neglect the temple. That was said once before. Now they're saying it again. Why do they repeat things in the Bible? So history tells us to repeat itself, but usually we don't. There you go. They repeat it so we don't forget it. But usually we've got to repeat it, something we're not good at, and we're going to mess it up. So, a little bit of foreshadowing, but I'm going to tell you, there might be some troubles coming up before we finish the Bible. Okay? Any questions about chapter 10? I'm going to just ask maybe a couple more questions here before we finish. What about us? Are we supposed to do all this stuff? No. I think to a certain extent, but like you said, we get Am I supposed to bring wood to the altar? Do we do we burn wood on our altar? You know, our altar is made of wood. I think So it's not exactly the same, right? No, but we get tied. Yeah, we're supposed to tie. Yeah. All right. So is tie still supposed to be ten percent? I don't know. Yes. 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 What's the group answer? I'd say if you give what you give. A gracious giver is better than no giver. That's true. Are there times that we're supposed to give more? If we have more, we give more. If you have more, you give more. And am I supposed to follow any rules? Regarding giving? Just in general. Following God. Are there rules involved in me following God as a Christian? Yeah, yeah. you're supposed to read a Christ life, right? You want me to go love get the book? God, love All right. <laughs> so, Charity, you pulled out the big one first. <laughs> she said, okay, did you hear what she said? Uh -uh. Be Christ like. She said we're supposed to be Christ like. Uh -huh. So you you went right for the top. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's it. That's the standard. <laughs> we're I know I'm not, but I mean, that's what we achieved to be. That's the goal, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. That's the goal. Be Christ like. Um, there are some specific rules from the Old Testament. Still apply, right? Can you think of any rules from the Old Testament? Don't kill. Don't kill. Sure. What was yours? Ten commandments. Ten commandments. Sure. Those still apply, right? Some are exactly the same. Don't kill people, right? Some might be a little bit different. I mean, like, it's hard to say don't have any other gods before us, before him. But it's hard because there's so many other religions out there. So does that only apply to us because we believe it, or does that go in the Whole because you can't really whole. make fun of the Buddhist guy over there because that's his God. That's his religion. Well, it's not right. Let I can't me ask you're going to go to hell. Let's choose Nehemiah chapter right. 10 as an example. These things that they just listed, who's supposed to follow these things? Um, the Levites. Well, the people everybody in the little yeah. city, everyone that now, signed it. Oh, now, well, the yeah, people who aren't Jewish, Jewish who lived in the next town over, yeah. are they supposed to follow this rule? Well, did they know about it, I guess. Did they agree to follow I mean, this rule? You just said they're, like, uh, what's it called, right? Jewish? So, yeah, they should know about no, it. No, I said the people in the next town over who are not Jewish. Oh, no, that's not, no. I think they shouldn't have to know because how would they know what we're doing? There you that's go. not fair. I think that's the same answer for Christianity. If somebody's never read the Bible, you can't expect them to follow it. Right. I mean, but, we do, but we do want to, we 
want to be missional people. We want people who do not know. We want to tell them who the one true God is. You see, that's what the hard part is. Like, for instance, like, I'm not trying to pick a fool on this girl, but this this girl that comes as a uh, the customer, that's what she sees me. She's handing me Jehovah Witness song, which is cool. You know, I'm going to say no, but at the same time, I'm like, see, I'm Christian too. Cool. But to me, like, what she's saying, like, oh, I don't celebrate birthdays and stuff like that. It's not that I how my dad's going with things. Like, oh, birthdays are for paganism. Well, we did all when I was a kid. So what's the difference? You know, like, is it not right to celebrate our birthdays and holidays and stuff like that? There are or some... is it truly paganism? And she's trying to confuse you. Well, let me, let she's me say... She's supposed to be Christian, though. There are some things that the Bible explicitly talks about. It says do this, don't do that, okay? There are other things that the Bible doesn't say explicitly, okay? The Bible doesn't talk about the internet, right? Yeah, it did. Well, it didn't exist. As far as we know, it didn't exist. So, actually, so <laughs> there are always going to be some things that we encounter in our lives that the Bible doesn't explicitly address. I mean, they've had, like, you know, look at the guy that, that went on the chair room or something like that one. I know, but before we get on 12 other tangents, let's answer this question, okay? There are things that the Bible doesn't tell us about. So the way we usually approach that is we say that's where prayer comes in, and we ask for the Holy Spirit to help us. So the Bible doesn't specifically address whether or not we should celebrate birthdays, okay? It doesn't say you have to. It doesn't say you can't. It doesn't say. So I would say pray about it, and if God doesn't want you to celebrate birthdays, I think you'll know in your heart that you're not supposed to celebrate birthdays. If God's cool with you celebrating birthdays, you'll, you'll know that too. Okay. And we will celebrate our birthday, so I hope it was a okay. We just celebrated. We did just say happy birthday. We just sang happy birthday, so you'll, you'll understand I'm a little biased in the answer to that question. But I mean, I'm just saying, the Bible doesn't say you're not allowed to, but there's no rule that says you have to. If a family doesn't want to celebrate a birthday, there's no well, it says you have to. I mean, it's not. I think it's nice, but yeah, it's not very light. So there are the way. So there's a quote that we talk about sometimes that we should have unity in the essentials and freedom in the non-essentials. So there are some things that are not negotiable. Don't kill people. That's not negotiable. Okay. Other things like what kind of music should we play when we worship all right like freedom you pick some people don't have any music some people have music but they don't use instruments some people have a smoke and lasers and electric guitars mm -hmm. right freedom in the non-essential right Drums. but really we're trying to decide as we go what to do and if the bible had a rule about every choice we had to make it'd be so big you never could read it right so the good thing, honestly, I think the Holy Spirit is better than rules, right? Because the Holy Spirit shows our heart. Okay, this is a really rude term to this, but since you mentioned the Bible, I'm going to ask you. So they're saying that there's more than the 66 books, right? Who's they? TV. Let's say TV. Sure. So I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's a billion so, books in the right. world. So my thing is, if there's more than 66 books, how can we say this is the Holy Book if there's books missing from this book? Okay, well, we can't say there's books missing from this book if deciding that this book was this book is what makes it this book. Okay. So, back in the day, we'll go all the way back to Moses, right? Before Moses, they didn't really have much written down. They just talked about it. Okay? Around the time of Moses is when people were really just first learning alphabets and writing and all that kind of stuff. Okay? So that's when humanity was first figuring out how to write stuff down. So they started writing first, stuff down. That's when we first um, discovered how to draw out papyrus. It's kind of like well, that. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about written language, even yeah. carving in rock or on clay or writing in the dirt. So that's also another I'm just saying, like if he, if he all he wanted everyone to know him, right? Why would you make a bunch of different languages? Wouldn't you just want all of us to sing well, together? That's, that's addressed in the Bible too. Before we get to that, we gotta answer this question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So at one time, nothing was written. Then, in the early Jewish tradition, they didn't have things bound in books. They used scrolls. 
So you had the scroll of Genesis, you had the scroll of Jeremiah, you had the scroll of Isaiah, right? When Jesus got up to read one time in the New Testament, he read from the scroll of Isaiah. So it wasn't one bound book, it was a bunch of different scrolls. And they had decided which scrolls were the ones we used in worship. And then, of course, they had lots of other scrolls for lots of other things, okay? So we'll go back to some Jewish stuff here, right? They had those scrolls that they used in the synagogue and in the temple, but then they had other scrolls that they called the Talmud that were other things that people taught that were good things to know that they thought lots of people should know, but it wasn't scripture, okay? That's really what we're talking about. So as time developed, we have the birth of Jesus, we have the New Testament, all that stuff gets written. Well, as that stuff's getting written, they've got to decide, okay, now we've got all this new stuff, okay? What do we include and what don't we include? And so over the course of a couple hundred years and a bunch of meetings and a bunch of people getting together and praying and thinking and talking and arguing and having you know lunch together and then talking some more, they decided, okay, these 66 books are going to be what they call the canon. No, it's not like boom canon. Right. Canon was another word for a rule, like a measurement, like a yardstick. Okay? <coughs> so that these 66 books were going to be the canon. But there were other books that were commonly used, and even some of those books were referred to. So I'll use one as an example. Uh, the book of Enoch. Right. Okay? In Jude, in the Bible, it quotes Enoch. So everybody knew it existed. Lots of people read it. Enough people read it that Jude quotes it. It's not included in the Bible. So once they started printing books and having it all bound, some people took some of that extra stuff, like Enoch, stuck it in the same book. Okay? The, the fancy word we use for some of those books are called the Apocrypha. Okay? I have a Bible that includes Apocrypha on my shelf in my office. Okay? Those are books that were saying lots of people read them. They were around at the time they're not scripture okay so stuff that's around that people read in the bible they're not the same thing <coughs> now as we go through time as you know people argue so some people said i want to include the book of enoch and some people said i don't want to include the book of enoch so some people did and some people didn't the 66 that are in this this is like the minimum rule okay Pretty much everybody believes that these count. There's other stuff too, but these 66, we're saying this is kind of the, the minimum, right? Okay. Like the main focus. Right. Now, there's other stuff. There's lots of other stuff. Some of it is stuff people who we knew in the Bible wrote. Some of it's stuff historians wrote around that time. Some of it's the Apocrypha. Now, some of the Apocrypha didn't get included because we don't know who wrote it. And we're not sure where it came from. But they're so, sure about this stuff. Most of it. Most of it. Some of it we don't know who wrote it. But most of it we do. There were lots of different rules they used to try to decide what should be included or not. Um, oh, yeah. But, well, they had to decide. Like the King James Version, was that actually like, the, that actually that was the king of like. Well, King James was the king of England. I think that's just, like that version of the Bible was like his version of the Bible, where he wanted it in the Bible. Yes, yes it's his version that he wanted. So, would you say that's not a good Bible because like it's coming from a king point of view? Yes. My most blunt answer: it's not the best Bible. No. Well, I'm just mentioning that because for I know more than one reason. One reason, 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 one reason like, is are so good. I mean, one I'm reason. That, but, two reasons why that's not the best Bible. One is you can't understand it. The second reason is there were translation choices that were made that are not the way we would translate the Bible. They're, they're choices that we would not make. How often do they change? I don't want to say the word change, but I guess like paraphrase. The, the word we should use is translate. Yeah, because because I mean, the Bible was not written. Like a new language. The Bible that's in front of me is in English. Right. The Bible was not written in English. Right. It had to get from Hebrew and Greek and a little bit of Aramaic into English, okay? As we learn more about those languages, we learn more about how to um, translate. So sometimes we learn that 
a word that was translated a certain way, that's wrong. We shouldn't translate it that way. Sometimes we learn that words were translated based on an idea, not a word. So, um, in a psalm, it might say, how my soul longs after for, after you, right? Because the actual Hebrew word is nefesh, which actually means throat, right? If I said, you know, I love Jill with all my throat, does that mean anything to you? Well, I mean, she's sad, that's silly to me. Right. Now, if I said I love Jill with all my heart, would that mean something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, when we're translating throat, it's not just the word, it's also how the word was used. Right? So, if I say, what's the definition of run? Run? Maybe fast. No, it's not. It's what happens to my stocking when I poke a hole. No, it's not. It's what happens when I spill gravy down the side of the pot. No, it's not. It's what you do in baseball when you make it. You see? That's not run. I scored a run. Right? So... You can say the word run. I think that's just more examples of the word run. They don't mean the same thing, though. No. So you have to learn. Yeah, I say it's something moving. If I didn't know anything about baseball and somebody said Carol scored a run, would I know how to translate that? No, you'd say, oh. what are you talking about? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe she ran really fast and won a race. So, <laughs> so as we learn, we get better at translating. Also, as our language changes, we need to make new translations. I just wonder how they got off of like the, like the Hindi, I don't know if it's Indian, but like how the Egyptians made like symbols. How do they do like bird? It does not mean bird, it means like something different. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think a bird if, means a bird. If somebody sent you the peach emoji, what would it mean? But. How did you get that? Peach is a fit butt. Peach is a fit butt. Well, there you go. The, bird doesn't mean a bird, though. the letter A, it meant man. You know why? Right? It looked like a dude yeah. standing there with his leg. Right? Wait, that's an A? Yeah. That's where we yeah. get the letter A from. It looked like a dude that. standing there. Well, I guess it's simple. Look. It looks like an A. Look. I guess I see yeah, an A. See? So, so I'm an A. Y M C A. So, we're getting into a lot of weeds here, but <laughs> language changes. So, right. this, is, this is a moving target. So we've got to keep working and always try to do our best. But one of the things I always say is the best translation is more than one. If you read five translations, four of them say something and the fifth doesn't, eh, maybe you should look at the way that four of them say it. As long as you can understand it. Yeah. But we did go over our time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. If you want to keep asking questions, we need to talk. Well, actually, I'm but to I'm just, we're going to close in prayer and we can turn YouTube off. And then if you want to keep talking, we can keep talking, okay? All right. Um, let's see. Who wants to close this in prayer? Ms. Carol, you want to pray for us? Sure. Thank you. Lord, I want to thank you and praise you for being here tonight and helping us understand everything that you want us to learn in Nehemiah. It's very, very important that we learn all of your words and how, you, how we take it in to our lives. <coughs> Please be with everyone we pray for tonight and be with us as we travel and help us come back to the church tomorrow for another teaching. Be with us then too. Please be with our pastor. In your gracious name, amen. amen. All right, good night, everybody. Let's see. Good night, Diane. Good night, Trudy. Good night, Edgar and Jane and Gina and Anna and Diane. I don't know if they're there, but Bethany and David, too, if you're there. David's probably at work. And Nigel and Sandy and Storm and Rocco and Trudy's cat that I never remember his name. <laughs> I'm just about to. Okay. All right. Let me turn this off and then we will be done. Bye.